Number 39. A compound of carbon and hydrogen contains 92.3% carbon and has a molar mass of 78.1 grams per mole. What is its molecular formula? Okay. So they gave us a percent composition and they're telling us that it has a molar mass and they're looking for a molecular formula. Basically, if you see that they give you percents and they're asking for a molecular formula, they basically want you to find the empirical formula. From a empirical formula, we can always find out a molecular formula. Now, if they give you a molar mass, right? In this case, they told us that the molar mass was 78.1 grams per mole. This molar, M-O-L, M-O-L in molecular, this is the molecular formula mass, okay? So just make that connection. Molar mass goes with molecular formula. But now how do we find this? Well, we need to go to empirical formula, right? And we know that we can do that from a percent, right? We've done a couple of questions already. So if you're on the playlist and you want more practice, you can just go back a couple of questions. Um, but there's a four step process. And now I'm going to add one step on because we want to find the molecular formula. And that's this guy. So I think I have enough room. Maybe I'll just make this a little bit smaller. But this is the whole big scheme of things from a percent to get to a molecular formula. We got to go through all of these steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to list out what I have. Now, the only percent that they told me was that it was 92.3% carbon. But they told me that the compound was carbon and hydrogen. So I know that there has to be some percentage of hydrogen in my compound, but what is it? Well, remember a percentage, a total percentage, a, a whole compound is made out of 100%. So if 92.3% is devoted towards carbon, how many, or what's the percentage that's de devoted to hydrogen? Yeah, we would do 100 minus 92.3. And I get 7.7. .7. So that's the first thing. They didn't give you the percentage of hydrogen, but we had to assume that it was 100%. So I do 100 minus 92.3 to get 7.7% .7 hydrogen. Now I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay. So how do I go from a percentage to grams? Well, since we just said that the total percentage between these two elements is 100%, we can assume that when they were doing, or who's, who's they, right? Scientists, I don't know. But, you know, th this question, since it was out of 100%, we could also assume that the entire gram sample is out of 100 grams. This will tell us that whatever the percentage it was actually equals the amount of grams. Because if I add this up in terms of grams, I would get 100 grams. 100%, 100 grams. So the percentages are the same. This equals 92.3 grams of carbon, and this equals 7.7 .7 grams of hydrogen. And the first step is done. Look how easy that was. Now we go to the next thing. How do I go from a gram to a mole? Ah, this, my friends is just conversion. This is a conversion factor. We have to convert. And how do we convert? Let me just actually put this maybe a little bit lower. Okay. So how do we convert? Remember any conversion, you're always taking the unit that you have and you're multiplying it by a ratio. Okay. So we're going to do that for both of them. So grams of hydrogen, we're going to multiply by a ratio. And whatever unit you do not want, in this case, you want to convert from grams to moles. So you don't want grams anymore. You always put that unit on the opposite side. In this case, it's going on the bottom. So grams of carbon goes on the bottom. Grams of hydrogen goes on the bottom. We're looking for moles. So that means that the unit mole of carbon would go on the top for the carbon guys. And mole of hydrogen would go on the top for the hydrogen conversion. But now what numbers am I using? That's when we go to the periodic table. The mass numbers are the ones that are in a decimal, all right? 
It's not the atomic number. That's these whole numbers. These are your gram values. So 1.008 equivalent for gram for hydrogen and 12.01 grams of carbon. But that always equals one mole. So make that note. If you're using these numbers, this always equals one mole of that element. So for carbon, I have one mole of carbon and the number goes with the grams. Same thing for the hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen and that number goes with the grams. Let me just maybe make this a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now grams of carbon cancels out with grams of carbon, grams of hydrogen cancels out with grams of hydrogen, and you're left with mole of carbon on the top and mole of hydrogen. So we're good. So let's just do the math. Denominator divide DD. So those two numbers are in the denominator. So you got to divide 92.3 divided by 12.01. I get 7.685. I'll just cut it off after a few decimals. 7.685 mole of carbon. And then 7.7 .7 divided by 1.008. I get 7.639. 7.639. Right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm just making sure I put in the numbers, right? So it looks like we're good here. Okay. And that part's done. Now we have to go from a mole, which is what we have to a mole ratio. Now, remember a ratio is just taking a number and dividing it by some other number. That's what a ratio is a, a division. So we have our two numbers, right? 7.685 and 7.639. But we have to divide these two numbers to make the ratio. But now the question is, what am I dividing it by, right? What's the number that goes on the bottom? Well, think about what an empirical formula is, because that's what we're trying to get to. The empirical formula is the most simplified formula. It is the smallest coefficients that can possibly exist with those combinations of elements. So simplest, smallest, go with that idea. All you're doing to go from your moles to your mole ratio is you're just dividing by the smallest number. So just look at your two numbers. In this case, you have two. And which one is smaller? Six point, uh, seven point six eight five or seven point six three nine. They're very, very close, but this one is smaller. So I'm going to divide both of them by seven point six three nine. And now you have a ratio. That's your mole ratio. Now let's figure out what the numbers are. Well, this one on the bottom for hydrogen, it's the same number. So that's going to cancel out. This is one mole of hydrogen. And now let's see what we get for carbon. 7.685 divided by, whoop, divided by 7.639. I get one decimal and then a bunch of numbers, but it's very, 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 very close to one mole of carbon. At this stage of the game, if you can round to whole numbers, do it. Okay. But they have to be very, 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 very close. Now, we're going to get that empirical formula. We have all whole numbers, so I can take the numbers that I have and use them as coefficients. So start from the top, work your way down. We'll start with C. And in this case, I only have one, so I don't really have to put the one, but it's there. And then H. I don't have to put the one, but it's there. CH is your empirical well, oh, that's ugly. Empirical formula. Okay. So we got one step done. And these are now all done. Now we just got to take that empirical formula and go to the molecular formula. Now this number finally comes into play. What you're going to do is you're going to take, and I'm going to, maybe I'll put this down here. I'm going to star this out. So 
I'm, you're going to take your molar mass or your molecular mass, because they might say it differently, and divide it by your empirical mass. And you're going to get some number, okay? So that's what we're looking for. We're searching for the number that the molar mass divided by the empirical mass is. Now, they told us what the molar mass was. They told us that it was 78.1. Now, if you want to put grams per mole, that's fine with me. But let's not use the units because we know that we're going to use the proper units. So it's 78.1 divided by, now we got to find that empirical mass. That's when we find the mass of CH. We've done tons of mass, you know, finding molecular masses and formula masses and grams per moles. So we know how to do this, right? We set them up, right? We have carbon, we have hydrogen. We have one carbon, we have one hydrogen. Each carbon, just like we said, weighed 12.01. Each hydrogen is 1.008. And then you add them up, right? So 12.01 plus 1.08. And actually, I'm just going to... I'll just put this down here. So we'll say, you know, down here, the empirical mass for CH would just be 12.01 plus 1.008. I get 13.018 grams per mole. That's the unit if we're taking it from the periodic table. So now I'm just going to take this number and place it right here. So I'm going to do 78.1 divided by 13.018. And I'm going to get some number. Let's see what it is. 78.1 divided by 13.018. Now, in this case, this should be a whole number. You're basically finding out the how, how much larger the molecular formula is from your empirical formula. So I get 5.999, but this technically rounds to 6. This is the number that you are going to multiply by your subscripts. So it was CH, right? And there was one carbon and one hydrogen. Now all you have to do is multiply those subscripts by that number. And in this case, it's 6. So 1 times 6, and then 1 times 6 again. So what do we get? We get C6H6, right? 1 times 6 is 6, and 1 times 6 is 6. So <laughs> C6H6, and that is your molecular formula. So empirical formula was just CH, but then since we did that formula and we got a 6, we now know that the molecular formula is C6H6, and that is your final answer. Guys, what do you think? Hope for this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the video, and that would help us out so much. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. That's amazing. It's crazy. It's awesome, and it's pretty cool. And couldn't have been done without you guys. So thank you so much for that. See you all in the next lesson and have an awesome, awesome day. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.